Hello everyone and welcome to Meeple Bits. I'm Ryan Novak. The smartest minds of our generation are gathering together at the Great Science Fair. Everyone's been working hard on their creations, but only one will be crowned champion. Or so the premise of our game today, Gizmos, has led you to believe. What I found most is that uh, basically the laziest scientist along the path to victory is the winner. Designed by Phil Walker Harding, published by Simon for two to four players with a playtime of 40 to 50 minutes. This game is definitely competitive and highly enjoyable. So let's dive right in. And welcome back, guys. We've set up a game of Gizmos, and I'll go through that setup in just a moment, for three players for this demonstration. To begin, you're going to deal out everyone a player board, or tableau, and one of these starting Gizmo cards, which are indicated with the zero and the file icons. They're in gray color, so they're separated from everything else on the board. When playing, there's four types of energy to acquire. You've got your black types of energy, which is represented by battery. You have yellow, which is represented for electricity. You have red, which is heat. And finally, blue, which is atomic. These are the four energy types that you're going to be collecting throughout the game. The winning condition is the first player that triggers the end game event of either acquiring 16 gizmos or four of the tier three gizmos. I'll go into the tiers in just a moment. Looking at your tableau, there's six different areas. Upgrade, converters, file, pick, build, research. Each of them doing a specific action. Gizmos is played, as I mentioned, over the rounds up to either a player reaching 16 total built gizmos or four tier three gizmos. On your turn, you will take one action. Any of those one actions are indicated on your tableau in white. The goal of the game is to take your one action wisely that can hopefully trigger other events throughout the game. Over on the left, you'll notice some iconography one which is a five represented with hands holding an orb which indicates how many total energies can be held inside of your circular energy um, device i think they're called storage rings one is your amount of files that you can have archived and three is the amount of cards you may research using the research action as indicated here during your turn, if you file a card, you're going to either choose a face-up gizmo from the display area and add it to your archive. Your archive is just your hand off to the side. Or, you what? That, yeah, basically that's actually you're all you're going to do. Sorry about that. So you're going to choose a face-up card and then put it to the side of the display area. Action two that you could choose is pick. That takes allow you to take one energy from the six available energies on the row, not from the bucket. Build. You're going to choose a face-up gizmo from the display area represented here or from your archive. You're going to spend the energy indicated to build it, and then that becomes an active gizmo in your tableau. Example. On my turn, if I were to select this to build, I would need one yellow marble to build this gizmo. As indicated in the upper left of this card, it's going to be activated here in my build section. Also as indicated, whenever I then build a blue gizmo, I will receive one additional victory point. And this gizmo is worth one victory point at the game's end. Each player will take one turn, one action on their turn and hopefully chain together by collecting many gizmos the ability to do more than one thing or chain together with that one action. So order of operations is going to be important. 
So let's go ahead and get started. That's the game in a nutshell. You get one, uh, oh, sorry, I actually didn't address the uh, other research or converters. So the other action that you can do is research. Draw a card from uh, the face one, any one of these three face down decks. You're gonna choose the number as indicated on your tableau, starting with three. And then you're going to either choose one to build or to file away. Remember, when you file that card, it does trigger this file action. So if I were to research and then archive it or file that card away, anything triggered inside of here, as indicated on your starting card, when you file away a card, you're going to pick a random. This black bar indicated by a question mark means that I'm going to take from the bucket here. And then converters. Converters are found throughout the game. And let's see, do we have any out initially? Yes, we do. Here's one converter. So if we were to acquire this and build it, this will basically say that what we can do is we can build, uh, we'll be able to convert one red heat into two. So having one red marble gets to act as having two red marbles for whatever I'm building on that turn. And that does it. Every player gets one uh, action per turn, and the first player to reach either 16 total gizmos, including your starting gizmo, or four of the tier three gizmos, as represented with a brown background, as opposed to the gray on the rest, will trigger the end game. Every player will have an equal number of turns, so the first player, if they trigger the event, players that follow will get one additional turn to try to do a mad dash for victory points. If the last player triggers the uh, end game event, then the game ends immediately. Then you'll count up your victory points. Whoever has the most victory points is declared the science champion or the winner. So let's go ahead and dive into a couple of quick rounds so that we can see how it's played. This brown tableau indicates that this is the first player. This player I'll play as myself. Oftentimes, I like to jump out with the strategy of file. So I like to scan the area and see if there's anything that I want to file. The reason being is, oftentimes, I'll risk the additional action for taking a card and then hope that I can get a good random out of the bucket. So looking at usually the tier one to begin, I'm going to say, hmm, I like that additional file action because it'll allow me to trigger some other stuff on a subsequent turn. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one. So I'm going to select this as my file action, putting it off to the side and archiving it away. Immediately, you're going to draw one additional card, putting it out here into the middle. And then for my action, I'm going to draw one random. And that's my random, I got a yellow. Not what I was hoping to get because as you guys saw, the card that I had selected was a blue. So player two is gonna take their turn. On their turn, you know what? They're gonna be a little less risky. They're gonna go ahead and take a black one from the, uh, they're gonna do a pick action. They're gonna pick the black um, from the uh, row. Let me go ahead and bring this over here. They're gonna pick that one and put it into their energy storage ring. And that's their turn. Player three, they're feeling a little less adventurous as well. They're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna take the red from here and drop it over in their energy ring. Now it's back to my turn. Okay, as you guys saw, I archived the card that I can't yet use. So I can either, well, really it's my only thing to do is to pick or build. I can really only pick or build this black one, which isn't so bad for me because, I, oh, sorry, I have a yellow one. Black is the player too. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and build this card on my turn. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna pay its one energy cost to the pool, and then we are gonna go ahead and put it where it belongs, which is in the build category. Now on future turns, if I build any blues, which does help me out because I have a blue sitting in my archive, I'll be able to take one additional victory point. Now it's player two's turn. They've already taken a black one. Oh, sorry, we forgot to replace this. They've already taken a black one, and so their action is they're gonna go ahead and take this card and build it right away and then you're gonna put it right on top. Pay its cost to the pool, and that's their turn. Nothing else was really triggered on that event. Going over to player three, player three is probably gonna do the same thing. I gotta to remember to put this one back out there. Player three is looking at this and they're thinking, okay, 
I don't like what's in the immediate here. I haven't archived yet, but you know what? Let me go ahead and archive this converter. So they've got one red already, and they're going to hope that they can grab a red from the random. So we'll archive that now. Grabbing a random from here, it's a black. So not what they were hoping for, but not an altogether loss. Back to my turn. As you can see, the turns play relatively quickly, which is a good thing. So back to my turn, I'm looking around, I still need a blue to build this archived item, but if I, oh, I can't archive again because as indicated on my tableau, I don't have any upgrades. So I'm gonna to need to go ahead, oh, there's an upgrade for us. This upgrade that I just pulled indicates that if I buy it for three blue, what I get is plus two storage in my ring, plus one in my archive, meaning I can archive two, and if I ever do my research action, I can pull a total of five cards. That's not bad. But on my turn, I need to get this one built, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick this blue from the row. Next player. Now, as you see, if they take an archive, they're gonna to get to pick from the row and pull a random, which isn't a bad predicament to be in. And as they're looking forward, maybe they wanna do some upgrades. So you know what? They're gonna go ahead and take this and archive it out. And you know what? I realized that there was one key element that I missed in the initial setup. You'll notice that tiers one, two, and three have four, three, and two cards put out there. Up on tier three, it's important to in, in, note and indicate that while there are a lot more tier three gizmos to build, you're only actually pulling out 16 gizmos total. The rest are put into the box. So player two has taken their turn. They did, an, they did the file action. That file action indicates that they're going to be able to pull from the uh, row and pull a random. They filed the blue and there's no blues in the row. So that's a bummer. But they're going to go ahead and take a black because there is a black out there. And then they're going to draw a random. That random, a red. Okay, not horrible. Now looking over at player three. Player three, looking at what they have available, they have a black and a red energy. And inside of their archive, what they're looking at is they need two red to do this one. There are no reds out there, so that doesn't really help them. But what does help them is go ahead and building this black for them. So they're going to go ahead and build this converter, which converts any yellow energy into whatever energy they choose. So building this, they're going to place it underneath their converter, pay its one cost, and on to the next person. So my turn again. I'm going to go ahead and build this one, pay its one cost to the pool, and now I've got my additional file. Now, I've also built a blue, which has triggered this gizmo to be uh, executed, which now gives me one additional victory point towards the end of the game scoring. Player two's turn. What do they have again? They've got three blues in their archive, so they're trying to get some, uh, some blues. And usually there's more players to remind me to pull these out. Okay, so they've got red and black. The current energy row isn't exciting for what we have out there and they do need to get that built so they're going to go ahead and build an upgrade. They're going to pay its one red cost and then put it into its upgrade section. Replenishing the pool as always. And now it's player three's turn. Player three is also looking out there like hmm what can I do with my one red energy that I have now? and my one archived, which I need two red to do anything with. Well, it's not looking too good because they can either buy this converter, which doesn't necessarily help them now, or let's go ahead and do a research action. So we're gonna draw three cards for player three and see what we get. Looking at this, now remember, when doing a research action, I can either archive or file or build immediately. If I can do none of them, then it's a wasted turn. Unfortunately for player three, that seems to be the case. So we'll put these in any order at the bottom of the deck. Moving on to my turn once again, I have nothing in my archive, so I could file, which could trigger a few things for me, which isn't bad. 
So let's go ahead and file away one of these tier threes. Now the far right tier three is indicated around its edge by all colors. This is one of these special gizmos whereby all I need are seven total gizmos of any color and I can build this gizmo. But as you'll notice, I can only store five in my current uh, energy ring. So holding on to this so early without having any upgrades, probably not the best strategy. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and pick up this red and file it away. I'm going to get to pick from the row. There's a lot of yellow, so let's go ahead and use those up and then pick a red. Not the most productive turn for me, but that's usually how it goes. You're going to have to, you know, really get a good luck of draws in both your marbles and what comes out here in hopes of being able to develop a solid string of actions. So on to player two. Again, they want to try to get to those three that they've been saving up for so that they can build that archive. But they also have an upgrade, which indicates that they can have two in their archive. So they could actually pick up another one, which would trigger a few things for them which isn't that bad. They have one black now. So you know what? Let's go ahead and take, let's go ahead and archive this yellow for them because they can have two. They're gonna take a yellow from here, put it into their energy ring, and then they're gonna draw a rainbow from the pool. Another blue. Okay, so now progress has been somewhat made for them. Draw out another card, and now on to player three. But the guys, that's basically it. That's how you play gizmos. Round and round it goes, one action, hoping to chain together many more re uh, actions so that you can get the most bang for your buck on your turn. All right, guys, that's gizmos. I really hope you enjoyed the playthrough or the, I guess, how to play video. Uh, more to come. Um, I'm going to try to clean them up a little bit more. So the things that I really like about gizmos is that every turn plays quickly. You get one action, you got to keep moving. There's a good amount of variety with the gizmos that come out. I think there's over a, a hundred, which is really cool. Um, and the replayability is, is definitely there because uh, as you saw through that, uh, again, random setup, uh, unscripted, there's, um, you know, there's this randomness to it that adds to replayability, not necessarily in a frustrating way, but into uh, definitely a fun way because you never know what, um, what energy types are going to be in the row for you to grab. You never know which gizmos are going to come out. And most importantly, you don't know which gizmos are actually going to come out in the tier three. And that becomes really important as you get closer to game's end. So I guess really one of my, my gripes about the game is probably just the marble dispenser. It's really flimsy and kind of, uh, it's, it's made of cardboard that you have to assemble and disassemble. Um, Camel Up is one that had a, a cool kind of dice roller that was made in a similar fashion, but also that wore down. They did a reprint of that one and had a very cool, I, I guess, plastic mold for the dice dispenser. So I think Gizmos could really use a, an upgrade really just on the marble dispensers. Otherwise, the game is great. You know, I, I definitely have a lot of fun and, and the crew really have enjoyed this game anytime I've broken it out. Um, so yeah, those are, those are my thoughts, guys. Um, you know, any, any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching and until next time.